Good morning from the tailgate, y'all. Got a great night's sleep last night. Just rolled up the bedroll. It was still. Uh, we've got a little bit of overcast, some dew right now, but I don't think it got below 63 degrees last night. I mean, it was just like I had a blanket draped over the top of me, and that was it. Not really feeling like the full Uncle Herschel breakfast this morning, so I'm just going to grab my little my tea, freeze-dried meal, and we'll hit the water. Let me hear you sing, Silver Bullet, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a gorgeous morning. Much better than yesterday. Boat ramp, parking lot is full. As it should be. Alright, we're going to start on the bank I fished the first day, at the very end of the day, and caught some fish on. Here's what is really exciting that I noticed yesterday afternoon. It got warm, y'all. The water temps got into the low 60s, and when that happens, bass start to move up and at least start thinking about bedding, and that's exactly what happened. I saw dozens of male bass cruising up in the shallows and I think because it was not very cold last night some of those will probably stay up there and what typically happens is you're, you're moving bait bite better in the morning when you get those warmer temperatures in the afternoon um, then you start getting on that soft plastic kind of more subtle bite because those fish are up there cruising they're thinking about spawning they're not really thinking about eating but in the morning you can still get some feeding activity so I'm gonna start with some moving baits and then I'm going to transition into some plastics as the Sun comes out but I think this bank that I fished and caught some fish on it'll probably have a lot more fish on it that are thinking about coming up here into this pocket and spawning so let's grab a rod let's get it bent all right, what to start with? I'm actually not gonna pick up the, the old lippy to start. Look at that little cruiser there, three foot. So I'm gonna pick up a five jig and just get a feel for if these fish are going to, oh, I just got a bump, first cast. First cast, my, I think that's my first bite on a vibe jig in days. I just want to get a feel for if these fish are going to eat a moving bait or not. Water's really calm. There's just not a lot of movement. Water has dipped back down into the high 50s, but yeah, yeah, that might have pulled some fish out. This is that time of year where they'll, they'll literally just go back and forth from like their staging spot to their spawning spot. Warming up. Pulling back, but it really was not that cold last night, so I suspect we'll we'll still see cruisers up here if we really want to look for them. This little point is very telling. It's going to be very telling. It's a good clue because I know there's going to be a fish on that. Not even a question. So I'm going to pick up a dart, watermelon red. You ain't got watermelon red darts, you need to get some. The next couple months, it's gonna be a big player. It's like, oh, that looks so good. I can't stand it just floating in front of my face. Let me go give it a lick. 
just had one eat it eat it at the top i wasn't rolling but i threw it all the way up there on the bank and that fish came up and swiped it heck why are, okay it's february i gotta keep reminding myself it is february it is not march okay i know you saw fish cruising but listen they're not locked Like we we're gonna have to hit the reset button on today. I gotta remember, it's still morning. What I saw yesterday afternoon will probably be completely different this morning. But when you're sleeping in the bed of your truck, I literally had no cell phone service to look up weather, anything, and then. All I have to think about is bass fishing. And I'm seeing bass cruising up in the shallows and remember the last 20 marches of my life. I got excited. Oh! Damn, that's a big gun. Gotta watch out. Widowmakers out here. All right, y'all, so start it out. With the soft plastic jerk bait, I think that is going to be a big player today as the sun comes out and if it gets calm. But for right now, we're calling the fire department and we're going to try to hose one. Our, our wind is already calming down. Just it's setting up for one of those days where you just sit in a cove and drag a plastic. And that's how you catch a big one. Whereas yesterday and the day before, it was, you know, 20, 30, 40 mile an hour winds. And all you can do is throw a moving bait. wrapped around my tip the fish just has it so deep in its mouth that my braid is rattling like it's just it's just braid on teeth oh my god come on you're not you're not even that big you're just hungry <laughs> <laughs> when they're eating a bait like that, guys. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, they're absolutely choking it. Look at that. Look at that fat. These are great, healthy fish out here. All right, we'll let it go. So confused because the braid was just making a weird noise like it was wrapped around my rod or something. I'm just gonna retie this. Fish had it so deep. And you can hear the connection is so strong with braid that you can hear when that line is like wrapped or doing something, and it sounded like it was wrapped around my guides, but it was smooth. And I knew the fish wasn't that big. I didn't think it had it that deep, but it had it down its throat. And it was the fish's teeth grinding on the line that made that sound. Crank. 
Oh, come on. No, no, I still got him. Better fish. Oh god, where are you going? Oh yeah, good fish. Barely hooked though. shirt got the fish there we go oh hooked him under the chin but he popped it oh my gosh see you darling starting to slap it. So hard. Oh my goodness. I mean that would knock the freaking slack in the line. They're just slapping at it now. I think I'm gonna switch up. Switch up to a swim jig. the dart and came back. That was a good call. There we go. Right in the top of the schnout. I think that fish just slapped, he slapped my trap. And I just quickly threw that dart back out there and see if he would eat it, and it did. I think it was the same fish, same same spot. <clears throat> I think that's probably going to be the thing, is going a little slower with the plastics. I can just tell that first one absolutely choked it, but I've had three other bites. One I barely hooked. And the other two, just, they knocked it, they slapped it, but they didn't eat it. Shoo, baby. Man. The amount of chunky butt bass on this grass light is just awesome. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Oh, my God, it came off. God, that's a big one. Oh. 
That was one of those that I thought had it down his throat. I could feel the line. I don't know what happened. Felt like I was stuck. Goodness gracious, y'all. There's some pigs up in here. All right, we're going to switch it up. Things have definitely changed over the last couple of days, and we're, we're starting to get that just sunny, warm, calmer weather. And they are not eating that lipless like they were. And I'm going to start throwing some soft plastics because I, I know there's there's a lot of fish in this area and you know they've been beat up a little bit but also it's just the conditions they're starting to think about moving towards that bank a little more and doing their spawn thing that water's getting warmer and it's just more still and when you have sun and calmer conditions and that water's over 55 soft plastics that's when I really start breaking them out so I got a wacky rig lunker log rigged up here with our um, our wacky rigging hook as well, our gold series wacky rigging hook. When the fish start moving up around the banks and they start cruising, get those cruisers. Um, a weightless uh, soft plastic jerk bait is is awesome. So I've got uh, the dart rigged up with a, a four aught hammer hook, a uh, twenty pound fluoro uh, on a go to rod, and then. I'm throwing the lunker log on a spinning setup. You just get a lot more distance with it. And uh, that's braid, and I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader on there. So I'm gonna toss this around. We'll get a little bit of wind, but not much. And see if I can pull some of these, uh, these fish that are sitting here off the grass line. Because they're just slapping that, that lipless and they're not eating it like they were. <clears throat> First cast with the wacky rig. And I just lost about a four pounder. I'm just working that lunker log over that grass top, letting it sink down, twitching it up. I can feel it getting stuck in that grass a little bit, but that's fine. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one on the log. Gonna jump. Oh yeah, you got that little finesse hook in you. Oh, you got that little finesse hook. You trying to get that out. Go ahead and try to get that out. See how that works out for you. Excuse me. Just sit down in my little chair right here. Oh, y'all, this is a big fish. Big, nice fish. Come here. Face. Thank you. Thank you very much, five pounder. Oh my gosh, longer log. Just switched up colors too. Wacky rig. That's my favorite color right there, guys. Green pumpkin blue. That is a fat hay. That might be one of the fattest, healthiest fish. I've caught all season. Absolutely gorgeous. Let you go. Oh, yeah, I love you. So the wind has really started picking up, and it's all I can really do is cast that wacky rig behind the boat. Got it spot locked. Cast it in front, and it's, you know, it goes like 20 yards. That's it. So I am going to switch it up and throw a swim jig as well, but I want to show you guys this hook. So this is the wacky lunker hook and it's, it's got a little bit bigger gap on it um, than like another finesse hook, like a drop shot style hook like this one. 
this is the Primo finesse hook, so this is what I would throw if I was throwing like a, a, a drop shot or if I wanted to wacky rig something really thin, like really thin profile, but mostly for drop shot. And this is the perfect size right here for the lunker log, that one aught, not size one, one aught. Now the way this is right here, I want you guys to look at that. This will sometimes happen and that's how you miss fish. That will get kinked up. It'll still happen it, it, even if you are using those keeper bands. But that keeper band that I'm using right there just lets that hook sit perpendicular to the to the bait itself and get better hookups if uh, if it doesn't get tangled up. It can it can still get tangled up. You just have to keep an eye on it. But if you rig the the hook directly into the plastic. It closes that gap more and it allows more room for air. So it can get folded in on itself or the hook can just get jumbled up in there. So the way I have it, it's very exposed. It gets hung in the grass a little bit, but just give it a pop. Since I got the braid on there, I can feel it and I can pop it out of that grass. So if you're gonna fish grass with wacky rigs, that's a good setup to have. I'm gonna switch up to a little swim jig too and throw that around. So I've got a half ounce grass hero. This is my favorite color combo right here. The black and blue with the white. It's weird, I know, but caught a lot of fish on it. I've got this rattling chunk on here, which is also great. You know, it's a little dingier water. I can hear that. But I, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna switch out this color right now. I don't know, I'm kind of feeling just the full bluegill experience and going with Okeechobee Craw as a trailer. Look at this little nasty biscuit right here. That rattle chamber on the rattling chunk is at the very end, so it allows you to use it as a jig trailer and not go through where that rattle is, just perfect. I trimmed up the skirt just a hair. Wow, bam it's good stuff right there. So I'm gonna swim that through the grass a little. Got it on a braid set up with a soft tip rod. Let's see if we can get another one. There's the old swimmy jig fish. Didn't really even feel the bite. Rod just started vibrating. I got one more spot I want to fish before I go. The bite is just. Not what it used to be. It's the plastics thing, man. But <laughs> with this wind, it's just tough. Got a runner. I don't know what we're dealing with here. Oh my gosh, the peanut. Little peanut buddy, you had me fooled. Look at that little pee, literally peeing. Get bigger. Well, yeah, I think this is how she's gonna leave me right here. High and dry, blowing me away. That last hour of fishing, it just spanked me, y'all. 
Got blown around with the wind, high sun came in, bite shut off, and it was not happening. All the fish I saw cruising up in the shallows yesterday I had dreams about. It just wasn't going on. Old faithful Fairfield. I've been coming out here for, gosh, since my college days, but really the last five years, had a lot of good days out here. But I would say this time, this year, it's been the best as far as size-wise goes. The, they used to run a power plant out here, and the water was always warm, and then they shut it down. And I think after they shut it down, it got even better. The grass was, like, less thick. It was more fishable. And I don't know if it just got better or it was easier to get those fish, but it was good. Bye, Fairfield. Miss you so much. Ben trying to hold her. See, Ben's just trying to do everything you do. Oh, little rugrats. Little yard yard squirrels. We missed you. We missed you at the park. Yeah, it doesn't feel good to be back. It's, back with the life over here. It's always good to come home. It's good to come home. Kids are in the yard. Wife is here to greet me with with a hug. And <laughs> I was like, with what? <laughs> <laughs> with a little kiss. With a good, yeah, hug and a kiss. I was out there alone, just sleeping in my truck. <laughs> Actually, I tell you what, I was well, not. I was alone, too. I wasn't with anybody else. You were with the kids and the uh, chickens. You had the Nighttime you had some friends. <laughs> I was actually not alone on this trip, guys, because I ran into so many of y'all, whether it was at Bucky's, on the road, the boat ramp, at the campground, uh, it's so awesome to see you guys out in the elements. It's always amazing to me how many of y'all watch my channel and uh, that was really cool to see, see folks on the lake and at the campground. All right, y'all, I am going to sign it off. I'm gonna spend some time with the family, put the silver bullet away for the next dangle. I think I'm going crappie fishing next. After seeing those bass swimming around in the shallows, just got me pumped. I gotta get out there, try to get that three pound crappie. I know they're gonna be on bed somewhere, Dad go. It's going to be exciting. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single dangle and any other outdoor adventure, y'all. Smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next one.